Willie, I'm so excited to see the great pile driver back in action at York. Firstly, the all important question, how is he? Well, he's, he's been great. He had a few days where he gave me quite a, a worry because it was one of those things. We thought initially straight away, definitely groin area. And then your mind plays overtime with you. So you have every check under the sun, done, which we've done and we've done it once, twice and three times. But he's fine, he's cantering, he's been cantering back two canters every day for the last 10 days. We're ready to go into a piece of work early next week. Oh, well, he looks fantastic in himself, he's bouncing. You wouldn't know he's ever had a setback. And it was so disappointing because it was just initially a few days. It was just one of those tweaks. What, what actually happened before the King George? Well, he's done a piece of work on the grass over with Charlie, let me go over with his. And he was, it was a, just a super, just like before we went to Epsom. 10 days before, it was just a superb, just nice piece of work. And um, he come back bouncing, bucking and kicking. He had his wash down, he come bouncing back to his box. He always gets down as a roll and jump and a kick. And all I can presume is he slipped because it wasn't until they come back after that lot, after breakfast, that he, it, the horse gave a shout to Jetta and Jetta went in and sort of then they rung me and I'm on my way to Newbury with the horse box. And I uh, said, he's not quite right. So Pete, my vet, come in and looked at it and he said I think it's soft tissue but we'll meet tomorrow morning early which we did and he was a lot better I mean if you said he was a little bit lame on Saturday morning he was nearly sound on Sunday and it was frustrating and some people say oh, what do you think you could go I said no we're not even going to confirm I've made my mind we're not even going to confirm because if we confirm and this is more forget it so, you know, there's so much future in front of this horse. He's a, he's a horse that's just got stronger, so there wasn't a chance of taking a chance. Do you think you would have won the King George? I'd have gone very close. If I hadn't have beaten the winner, I'd have been second. He's an absolute legend, this horse, though, isn't he? Because when you look at what he's achieved already, it, it's, it's pretty remarkable. I suppose it's not remarkable to you because you see it all the time, but from relatively humble beginnings to do what he's done, and he looks a million dollars when we just saw him out of his box there. He, he's done brilliant and it, we always felt he was going to do well because right from early doors we had another couple of horses in the yard and as a, as a trainer you pick the ones you like as his babies and I thought he's nice. Every time you put him with another horse you thought was going to be your best he blew it to pieces. And you thought, well, he doesn't have to be asked any questions and when we went to Salisbury, yes he was 66 to 1 but I said to the owners, this horse will not be far away. He'll only get beat by lack of experience, and he won. Yeah. And then he went on to do really well that season. And he was just a frame, he was just a big, weak baby. And then, obviously, last year was fantastic. I mean, Ascot, I, well, first of all, he went to Kempton, and we had drawn 11 of 11, and I said, we got very little chance of, of getting in from there, so drop out the back, and we dropped out the back and ran through, but Berlin Tango had the run of the race, and he was useful, Berlin Tango, and we just couldn't quite peg him back in the strikes, a short run in that bottom bend. And then we went to Ascot, and I was in the paddock, and on one, you're very bullish about a week before the race, and then you get two days before the race, and you start worrying about everything. But I got in the paddock, and I looked at him, and I thought, there's nothing in here that beat this. And he absolutely wandered home, and then we went to the Derby and it was all just, we just, it all happened wrong for us. And that can happen, big fields, we got knocked over and that was us out of the race. But he still made eye-catching progress up the straight. Where he'd come from up the straight was what I went, Why well, yeah, this is still a great run. And that's why I wanted to go to the Voltager and not go abroad for a Group 1. And the owners have been brilliant, every, they've been behind me every way. And the Voltager was just fantastic, even giving a penalty away. That Voltager though, looking back on it now, was an unbelievable race. You had Juan Elcano who won at Royal Ascot in last. Yep. Subjectivist second last. Yep. You beat Mogul. Doreen was in there, he's now running in grade ones in America. That's right, yeah. I mean, that is outstanding form. And you had the penalty and as we well. we had the penalty, yeah. And no. you didn't really have to do too much to win it like you did. Well, he's won hands and heels, which is quite amazing. But, I mean, he is, uh, he is talented. Mm. Um, uh, we'll, we'll get on to going back to the scene of that crime, if you like, that very impressive crime. It probably wasn't even a crime, but you know what I mean, yeah. in a moment. But I just want to talk about Epsom, if we can, with him. Because for you, for Martin, for the owners, to gain that, that Group 1 in the manner that you did, on the day that you did, just how special was that? Well, for me, I've been training now a long time. And we've had good horses. And we've got just nudged off in, in Group 1s with Stepper Point with other good horses, Safira's Fire, lots Enforcer. and lots of good Enforcer. Yeah. We just got smidged off in them, but we never got head in front. 
when he won, it was like, this is what we're doing it for. We, we, we've had a lot of good horses, but he's very, very special. Very, very special. And, and also, Chris joined us this year, Chris Grassick, who's my partner in, in the training. And um, it's great for him because yeah. Chris has come in here and he's landed in a yard that he's now, it's took me 30 odd years. I now. hope he's not taking the glory for it. Well, he's taking quite a lot, but he, he, listen, he's a, good, <laughs> he's a good chap, so fine now, he's no problem. Good. Uh, what about the international at York? Because I, I guess after what went, uh, what happened in the lead up to the King George, it's probably quite a nervy time, you just want to clean run into it. Yeah, and, and to be fair, he's now four, and that's the first hiccup we've ever had. Right. Now, I, I mean, I've been trying a long time and some owners say, can you plan out where we're going the horse? It never works because something goes wrong. But him, it's just gone like clockwork until then. And now, yeah, we'll just head on in there. We'll head on in there and he, he'll go back into fast work next Tuesday and then two, two bits of work and he's probably bang on because he wouldn't have put any weight. He, he'd have put two or three kilos on and, and he wouldn't have lost fitness in those few days. So we'll be back on target. I believe he's got enough speed for a mile and a quarter. Of course, I'd prefer it to be a mile and a half, but so we have a choice. Do we go to the Judmont, which is a great race worth fortunes and money, or do we go to the September Stakes two weeks later, which is, because, you know, we're looking at the arc, we're going for there and then the arc. So we just said if all's well and he gets there and we're absolutely 100% he'll go there. Because the trip with him, he's obviously tried a variety of trips, but you think his I absolute ideal is a mile and a half? I don't think he stays a mile and six. I think his class got him into... And no, listen, if we'd have ridden him different in the ledger and I'd have said to Martin, sit at the back and wait and produce him on the line, he may have been a lot, yeah. lot closer because that was his class, but he was on empty for the last furlong and a half. A mile and a half is his trip. But, but if you were to deviate from a mile and a half, you'd be happier in what you know to drop him down as opposed to take him up. Is that fair? Yeah, I dropped him down for the champion stakes last year, but I don't think it was the trip that beat us. I think we'd had enough for the season because I'd run him quite hard from June until yeah. then. And I just felt that we didn't fire. And what would be your ideal conditions? William Darby is just behind the camera, so he'll be listening to this. What would you want? You don't, don't mind? I don't mind. Really? I mean, he's one on heavy, he's one on hard. That's music well, he's one on, he's one on heavy that. and he's one on firm first time out. And he's one on good to firm, good, good to soft. So, yeah, if he could just have good to soft, it'd be wonderful. Or, or good. Yeah. It's great for everybody. And what do you make of the potential competition in the international? Because on paper, it does look to be oh, a phenomenal listen, judgment international. It's fantastic. I mean, you've got... The horse of Aidens looks world beater that won the Eclipse. He looks fantastic, but the, is, he's not on his own. You've got how many is going to turn up? This is going to be the question. How many will Aiden run? You might have the Philly alcohol free stepping she, up. Well, she, and she looks unbelievable. She's got to stay. Yeah. And we'll make it. We'll you know we'll make it a test of stamina. So she would have to stay, but she looks fantastic. Yeah. But there, there's not just two. There's there's. There's five, six very, very good horses, but They're that's the what, you want that's, to be this is the races we want to be on. And just tell us about the process, because am I right in thinking that you drive the horse box with I've him in? Yeah, I've done that through lockdown last year because there was no owners going, so I drove the horse box, and now I've got into a superstar. I'm a bit stupid like this, so now I drive the box with him in. <laughs> so yeah, we'll leave and go early. Last year we got up there and parked the box up and went back for it, and it broken down. So we were there till Hang very, on, very late. Well, we got there, unloaded him and Hubert, and um, he won. Hubert run good. Anyway, we went back to um, get the. I went back to get the box. It wouldn't move. <laughs> of course, one of the fans on the engine had broke. So the man come out. Took about three hours to come out. The man from RAC, and he was very, very good. And I said, "How far have you come?" He said, "Oh, four houses down the road." I said, three hours." <laughs> so we got back here about two. But who cares after that type yeah. of day? Yeah. Uh how much have you enjoyed the experience with pile driver well listen this is what we do it for and if we, as a trainer as a, as an owner as staff you live for these horses that's this is our life you know the boys that look after him and ride him and everybody that's involved in the yard that's their life so of course we want horses like him we're not a big yard so to get horses like him is very special Will you have anything else up at York during the week? Possibility, possibility Hubert could go there, possibly Data Protection, Epic, them type of horses, because there's not, yeah, Epic Endeavour, there's nice handicaps up there. Um, so yes, there's possibilities we will have others.
And what would it mean to you if you were to add another Group 1 to the CV and win the, the Judmon International? Well, listen, it'd be fantastic. Look how much it's worth, for one thing, for the owners and everything going on. Um, so it's a great race. It's a great race course. Of course, it'd be fantastic. This is what you're after. You know, my season was planned at the, in Christmas. I knew we were going there, 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 and we missed one. Well, I missed two because I didn't go to Ascot because I thought after the coronation it might have come a week too quick. Do you think he's always overpriced? I don't mean any disrespect yeah. by this, but if he was Ed trained by Aidan O'Brien, does that frustrate you? No, no. You don't care? No, I don't care. He can't read the paper and it doesn't bother me. No. He probably can. He's that good. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about reading the paper. Um, we wish you the best of luck. He's a superstar. We've loved following his journey and uh, can't wait to see him at York. Thank you.